It's an amazing time. We're seeing cannabis and its benefits getting the proper credit it deserves. And as a result, legalization is spreading all over the world. And with legalization, the recreational and medicinal use of cannabis is going to get some important backing. Scientists will receive the funding and support necessary to properly research cannabis. And consumers will gain accessibility without the fear of criminalization. Here at Quantum One, headquartered in Canada, the first G7 country to legalize it nationwide, we'll be at the forefront providing you the latest and most reliable information on this movement. So please subscribe. We're here to energize your connection to cannabis. So let's learn about cannabis and its two most well-studied cannabinoids, THC and CBD. Let's begin by explaining what cannabis is. Cannabis is a family of plants with two primary classifications, indica and sativa. Because of misinformation over the years, people refer to cannabis as marijuana or hemp, but they're not the same thing. Hemp and marijuana are species of cannabis, and both fall under the sativa classification. In other words, cannabis includes hemp and marijuana. The cannabis plant has an estimated several hundred naturally occurring chemical compounds. The number fluctuates quite a bit depending on where you're getting your information from, and that's because the exact number is simply unknown. It's suspected that other compounds that are present in really trivial amounts have yet to be discovered. So the numbers we have today are just estimates and rough ones at best. Amongst all these chemical compounds, there is a group of them, a class, that are called cannabinoids. The cannabinoids we find in the plant are called phytocannabinoids, phyto meaning plant. But there are other cannabinoids. For example, we produce cannabinoids within our body, and those are called endocannabinoids, endo meaning within or internal, but more on that later. Thus far, scientists have discovered around 120 different phytocannabinoids in the cannabis plant. The two most famous cannabinoids that get all the attention are THC and CBD. They are by far the most researched of the bunch. So let's start with THC. Its full name is Delta 9 Tetrahydrocannabinol, aka THC which is the main psychoactive cannabinoid in the plant. In fact, it's the only compound that seems to offer any psychoactive effects. In other words, as far as we know, it's solely responsible for the high that people experience when consuming cannabis. THC also offers some pain relieving effects, but not anywhere close to what CBD offers. CBD, which stands for cannabidiol, has anti-anxiety and anti-inflammatory properties, but it's not psychoactive. So when you consume cannabis with an effective dosage of CBD, you get pain relief and a calming effect, but without the high. You're not going to experience the mind and mood altering effects that THC has. And this is why CBD is the popular ingredient in medicinal cannabis products. A lot of patients are looking for pain relief, but they want to be able to go about their day with a sound mind. Interestingly, studies have shown that by having both THC and CBD present makes the compounds more effective. They interact synergistically to enhance each other's therapeutic potency. But more research needs to be done to figure out how and why, and if any ideal ratios exist that maximize their benefits. It's a pretty complex science when you get into it. So, if both THC and CBD belong to the same class, why such differences in their effect on us? Well, in order to understand the answer, we need to learn some things about our body. Almost three decades ago, scientists wanted to learn about how cannabis affected us. And through their research, they discovered a very important biological system present throughout the entire body and named it the endocannabinoid system. This system, which exists in all vertebrates, is responsible for modulating our health. 
it regulates our physiological conditions in order for our cells to work optimally. In other words, it's constantly trying to keep our inner workings balanced. And this system affects everything from our pleasure circuitry to brain functions to immune issues. We'll do a more in-depth video on how the endocannabinoid system works, but for now, focus on the fact that we have this amazing regulatory system that keeps our physiology in balance. Without getting into heavy medical terms, the endocannabinoid system has three key components. Cannabinoid receptors, there are two types called CB1 and CB2, endocannabinoids, and metabolic enzymes. In a nutshell, endocannabinoids bind to the CB1 and CB2 receptors throughout our body. This activates those receptors to release signals that help regulate our cellular conditions. Afterwards, enzymes digest, in other words, metabolize the endocannabinoids so that they aren't unnecessarily used. One of the key endocannabinoids in our bodies is anandamide, and it's also referred to as the bliss molecule. Now, while anandamide can bind to both CB1 and CB2 receptors, when it binds to CB1 receptors, a signal is released that creates a heightened sense of joy or euphoria. But the reason we're not walking around in a perpetual state of bliss is that enzymes will easily break down the anandamide. In effect, anandamide regulates our mood, our levels of happiness, and our ability to deal with stress. Now here's the cool part. THC shares a lot of similar properties to anandamide. They're like sisters who look a lot alike, except one is from a cannabis plant and the other comes from our bodies. It's pretty neat to think that we produce our own version of a cannabis compound. Like anandamide, THC binds to CB1 receptors, which release signals to create a sense of euphoria, in other words, the high. But unlike anandamide, enzymes can't break down THC, which is why we stay high for a while. It's actually our livers that break down the THC. What about CBD? CBD doesn't bind well with the CB1 receptors or even the CB2 receptors, so you're not going to get the high. In fact, CBD doesn't appear to have any significant interactions with the endocannabinoid system. That begs the question, what makes CBD effective in relieving pain? Well, research is revealing that CBD has indirect effects on the endocannabinoid system and is likely affecting other systems in the body as well. The result is that CBD seems to positively assist the conditions that modulate pain and inflammation amongst other things. Certainly, future research will reveal how cannabis and cannabinoids affect our bodies. Please, everyone, consume responsibly and stay informed by subscribing to our Quantum One channel. We've got a lot more videos on the way.